We are continuing to preview the 2023 college football schedule, and our stop today is Lake Wales, Florida. We get to visit with the head football coach for the Warner Royals, Coach Diallo Burks, in his second season with the program. Coach, let's just get right into it. Uh, last year, 1-9 and nine on the season, and maybe a little bit of a tough year to get going in your first season as the coach there. Can you talk about last year and bring us then to where we are right now? Okay. Well, first of all, I want to thank you, Joy, for, for, for having me on, on the show. I uh, really appreciate it, uh, this opportunity to um, get a chance to talk about our program nationally. Um, and so I really appreciate that opportunity. But um, I got here last January, actually January 10th, where I landed on, on campus. Um, previously got the job December 15th um, in, in 21. So uh, I knew it was going to be a, a journey. Um, I was elated about having the position, being a college head football coach, um, from coming from the pros, uh, where you know I was with the Chicago Bears as intern, Tennessee Titans, um, spent some time in high school. So taking over a program, um, not just any college program, but a faith-based program, that way I felt that I could open up all of Diallo Burke Senior and. Um, just uncover everything that I, my journey that I've been through as a player, as a believer, and as a man. And so, um, Dr. Ho, um, president here, Chrissy Mos Moskowitz, um, and Tomei, um, they, they led the charge, you know, and selected me to be able to do that. So when we came in, um, me and, uh, the staff, we came in with the, with the mindset that it was about change. It was about change. It wasn't about, um, I don't say rebuilding, um, I say enhancing, because a lot of things that that, that um, were here from 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 equipment to um, facilities were, were top of the line things. And so it was things that, you know, some division one programs don't have. And so I, I saw those blocks where we could build upon um, but the main blocks were were the players, and so what do we have to build from 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 that point? And so, once I stood on the stage um, at Lake Wells uh, Church of God, and I gave my you know pretty much accepts a speech um, from you know accepting the position and you know giving my charge on where we were going. Um, I had twenty seven guys that I. Uh, that came up to me after that speech and told me that point blank they were leaving until after they heard me speak. And it was 27, I literally counted. And so those guys, when I spoke to them, they said, Coach, we're just tired. We've been through, you know, a lot the, the previous years and, and you know, been sold this, sold that, whatever the case may be, but we, we, we're tired. They say, but what we see in, um, in the ballpark of, of, of thing, grand scheme of things is they say we see something different in you that we haven't seen before and so what you said it, it resonated you know in us and this was this was the group and so i told him i said just do me do me this favor i said give me the opportunity to change the atmosphere because if you change the atmosphere behaviors change and so that's what i vowed to that's what i stood on is that the atmosphere was going to change and so when we talk about changing the atmosphere, we're talking about, first of all, how do we operate as a man? First of all, um, as a believer, as a football player, as a student, how do we operate in those, those areas? And so that's what we had to set as a staff. We, we, we set that. I framed the picture out very nicely. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're not going to do. And this is a college football program, um, not from a high school mentality. And so um, it was just treating them like a man, speaking to them as a man and a young man. And so that was different. You know, that that was different far beyond anything that we started with pads and a helmet. It was it was the talk, um, the talk captured them. But me and if you know anything about me, I'm not about the talk. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, but then my actions is going to follow up in how I do it. Um, my mentality, I'm a worker. I don't speak a lot, but I work. And so I wanted to make sure that they understood from a grand scheme of things that this is where I'm looking at going. 
Now, how we get there is going to be the journey. That's going to be the journey, and that's the walk that we're going to have to put in the work each and every day to to get to where we, we want to be. And so it started off, and um, like I say, system was put in place. We're practicing. Um, off the bat, we start getting challenges. You know, challenges, we, we, get, we get guys in, we sign our recruiting class. But then once it was time to go to practice, different challenges started coming at us. I mean, it was coming. Um, we went our first six weeks of the season – where we did not have a full week of practice. And so as a new program, um, you know, only three returning guys who have played in a football game, you know, we're pretty much playing with, with, with babies. And, and, and so, you know, we was challenged by the weather. Um, and the schedule that we played, played with, with no slouch either. <laughs> and so, um, one of the things that I, I often talk about with, with, with my brother, who who I love him to death, that's my football guy, is he understands that he can get deep inside of me when, when he can say something that a lot of people can't say. And so he he, he he just told me, he said, I don't know what you're doing down there, man, but that's, that's not it with the schedule. So <laughs> it, was a, it was a running joke, but I understood what he was saying. And I, I, I conveyed to him that I said, hey, look, you know, we're playing these games because the standard is we want to play the best that we can possibly play. These guys are telling me that they want to go play, play ball on Sundays. Everybody has that dream. Okay. Um, but I want to ensure that when they come here, that guys know players know that we're, we're, we're going to play those type of caliber teams that host some of those guys. So if you have that dream of playing, then you have to be that type of guy. That was me as a player, as a young head coach, you know, that was going. And so I had to get the temperature of the entire program, not just the temperature of Diallo Burks. And so, but it was a learning tool for, for me to really uncover who I actually had in the boat with me. Because like I said, we came in in January and we didn't know any of these guys. We, we, didn't, we didn't know and we've never seen them play in the game. We've never seen them lift the weight. So we had to learn those things, you know, about our guys. And if anybody who has been in a tough situation understand once you go through a storm, okay, everything is pretty much uncovered. Everything in Warner University football has been uncovered. And so now we're able to build on to that because they understand how Coach Burks is going to, going to act in certain situations. I understand how I'm just throwing a player out there. Evans Valcourt is going to act in certain situations because of everything that we went through this past season. And so uh, as much of a disappointment that some people may say that our season was for me as, as a competitor, because uh, I mean, I'm a competitor um, as a coach, as a mentor, that was probably one of the best processes I have ever been through. And so now building upon success, what the success looked like being better than where you were. Well, if you look at it, we say we was at the bottom, so there's nowhere to go but up. But these guys have so much in them, when I say qualities of a champion, to be able to endure, you know, some of those losses that, that, that we've, we, we went through and to come back from it, to stand day to day and continue to work the tails off is, is, is unbelievable. And we, when you're talking about going to battle and going to plan for each other as a team, that's the number one quality that you look for. And that's the number one quality that I have in these guys right here. So, excuse me, going forward is we have a great base. We have a great base of guys that's coming back who's, who's, who's been battle tested. Now we're looking to just add on to those guys to now fulfill the journey of where we're trying to go. And coach, you're right. It was a it was a challenging schedule last year, and and had something a number of NAI schools don't had. You had a D1 opponent last year, had a D2 opponent as well, and so that was who you all faced. You mentioned one of the players in particular, Evans Valcor. So let's talk start right there with the leading scorer returning to your offense this season. It was an offense that that really that had no rushing touchdowns. Uh, that's an anomaly you don't see very often. Evans Valcor, one of your receivers. A leading score on the team. Can you talk about the offense coming into 23 now? And uh, will Balcourt be a part of that? 
Yes, sir. We're 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 definitely looking at first of all offensively being being more explosive than um, where we were. We looked at the um, position on the on the team. The wide receiver group um, was probably our most talented group um, as a whole. Um, we we had some guys that that could that could play, and you know they they held it together um, for us. But up front, we have a group of guys that. Um, that haven't really played together, but those guys um, transitioning through last last season was one that um, grew together as a group. They grew together individually um, to perform as one unit. So those guys coming back uh, were spearhead the and catapult us to really where we want to go because without those guys up front, we won't have anything else. Okay, and so. With that, we have guys like a um, um, Justin Butts, um, just highlighting a, a couple of the guys up, up, up front. Okay, we have Justin Butts, we have Trent McCrary, um, Eric Gonzalez, um, Dalton Colby, and uh, Spencer um, Husik, Husik Bailed um, that, that, that we'll have up front. Those are the main guys. They're coming back, and they're going to anchor our offensive line. Um, at QB, uh, Joe Gilchrist was one who, um, a freshman that came in for us last season that was very promising, um, ended up playing the last quarter um, of our first game when we played Kaiser and ended up being the starter for the next um, two games but got hurt in the West Florida game, so he was out for the for the year so. He will be coming back. We also have Evan Eschbach, uh, who actually started the season um, as the as the number one guy, but um, we rotated a couple guys in at that position, but he ended up um, winning the job. So he will be the starter coming into the season. And then we have a transfer, Xavier Holiday, um, that we acquired mid-year. And so he'll be, he came from um, Elizabeth City as well so we 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 have um, a couple guys coming in for recruits that we're very high on as well that's going to challenge that room um at running back like you said we didn't have any 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 rushing touchdowns and it's an alarming stat but um no one knows how the season is going to go no one knows how a game is going to go so um i've definitely seen it but this group of guys is not saying that they're not talented at all they were just a young group, and that was one of the positions where no, uh, we didn't have any experience at. So now coming back, you have Clyde Holland, the third, Kyle Mateen, okay, and Cohen um, Big, that who was um, at quarterback for us, and he's going to be kind of our slasher. He's going to play some running back. He's going to play some receiver. He's going to move all over the place. But those guys will, will, will anchor down that running back position. Um, at tight end, we have Jake Lazinski. Um, who started every game for us last year? Phenomenal player. Um, was close to, uh, I think, he was number two in, in, in receiving. Um, so he's coming back. And we're going to actually add in um, Gunnar Kohlberg, who is a transfer from TIU that we're, we're very high on, and DeQuest Fryer, who um, is a grad student from LaGrange College, two time All American. Um, there at LaGrange College who will be helping that tight end room as well. So we, we, we have some pieces that's coming in that's going to be very challenging. And then once you look to the to the wide receiver group, I call them the, the four horsemen. Um, you have Adrian Glasgow. You have um, Evan Safeman. You also have Logan King and then Valcourt. So those guys there will, will anchor that room once again. Um, and what a great base to to start with because of the versatility that a lot of those guys bring. They're not the same guys there. They they represent different phases of a wide receiver group. And so I'm lucky to have, you know, those those guys like that. But offensively, that's that's where we are, and that's what we're looking towards going into um, this season. We want to be more explosive. Um, we want to be able to to control the pace of the games and. Like I say, we want to be, when you say balanced, is this understanding what the defense is giving us and being able to just maximize and capitalize on those things that they're giving us. 
We're speaking now with Coach Diallo Burks in his second season as the head football coach at Warner here on Midwest Sportsnet. I encourage you, please continue to enjoy the videos here, our college football previews here as well as we talk about uh, small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Uh, Coach, with that in mind, you talked about where the the offense is. You've had a chance to see now the defense not only through its first season under your tutelage, but also now through the spring as well. A couple of players coming back, Keanu Griggs, as well as Michael Reynolds, that will be a part of that defense coming into 23. Can you talk about that? Yes, defensively um, is, is where we were kind of impacted um, during the transition um, of, of us coming in. So we have um, on the back end, Keone Griggs, who um, started a couple games last year for us, um, very knowledgeable, high IQ of the game. So he will be the, the, the leader of that group um, in the secondary, along with um, Kayvon Martin, um, Isaiah Asim and um, Jamar Wells, those those guys that we have, you know, added in. Jamar is new, but Kayvon um, had some time. He started a couple games. Isaiah Asim as well started some games. So that group have gotten a lot closer together um, that, than we were last season, okay? Um, and you look at it, they had a lot of adversity. A lot of adversity in that group, but we were able to scale back this spring, um, really get to the core heart of, of who we were as a secondary, creating that identity um, as a whole and individually of, of who we are. Um, because you can say that you're this type of player, but then the game action shows that you're another way. So we just honed that in and understood and showed them, okay, this is who we are. This is who we want to be. And uh, they took it very well and um, very interested in seeing how they are going to catapult themselves um, against other other uh, opponents. Uh, at the linebacker position, um, like I said, we lost uh, one of top defense, two of our top defense players uh, to graduation. Um, and so with that filling in the, in the gaps would be Deshaun Allen, who was a uh, transfer guy from Morgan State, um, that we acquired last season. Um, and so he will be in the rotation here leading this group uh, along with uh, Zach Little um, and uh, Jalen Pierre. Those guys will be anchoring that that linebacker group. Okay. Um, up front, you know, you, you say the big hogs, uh, the ones, uh, Mike Reynolds was one who was a anchor on the defense um, up front, played in every game, started every game. Um, along with Joe Hires, who uh, played early but ended up getting hurt. And so now he's back um, as well. We have Nick, Nick Skipper, who was hurt in the uh, Stephen F. Austin game, who was out for the season. We now get, get him back as well. So um, along with the pieces that we're adding in for recruiting, uh, that's going to be a pretty good group right there. So have some new faces on defense, uh, but – they will blend in perfectly with what the guys we already have. Coach, I know it will go a long way to have uh, – I mean, you, how many players that you mentioned just in the, in these last two segments that you'll get back who were injured last year for a significant portion of the season, too. I know that has to go a long way. You talked about Zach Little and uh, Jalen Pierre, uh, linebacker core, but also I know that they, they play a part of your special teams unit. Yes, yes, you have Zach Little, Jalen Pierre. Um, and also Evan, Evan Safeman um, is one of those three guys that pretty much play on every single special team. I also want to throw in Damian Rywall as, as, as well. Those guys will be ones that will play on every single uh, special team we have. And so, you know, you look at offense and defense, but those guys bring a dynamic to special teams where most people want to take those plays off to make it that offense and defensive field. Um, as well. Also, we have two guys, um, Aaron Belt and um, KJ Johnson, that will be coming in as well that will service on the defensive side of the ball will also be big special teams um, players as well. And so they know all three phases. Um, here with us, they mean a whole lot. We don't take one phase over the other. We feel all three are equally important. And so those guys 
uh, really home in that group and they rally that group around to make sure that we're solid on all teams. Coach, you mentioned as we opened up our, our time together today and, and the phrase you used was just to open up Diallo Burks and, and get to see who you are. Let me let me read a quote from uh, a little more than a year ago when, when you came to the program and, and you were talking about coming in, visiting with the people. Uh, one of the quotes that's at, attributed to you, I want to thank God for blessing me and my family with the opportunity to continue to positively impact the lives of student athletes through Christ and the game of football here at Warner University. I look forward to the challenges, and I'm ready to lead the program to great heights in faith and football. This is a phenomenal opportunity. I, at, let me give you an opportunity then to open up a little bit more and talk about what that means and how this is coming along now, a little bit more than a year into your tenure as the lead man. Well, first of all, you know, uh, faith is the core of, of, of what we do. Uh, each morning, when we get into the office as a staff, we pray. That's, that's the first thing we do. We, we pray together before we start start the day, before we start in the meeting, we pray. Um, and so that's that's been my journey. That's, that's you know, who I am. And so we want to make sure that we're operating in, in that way. Here we can openly express it. And so that's what makes it great about, you know, being here at Warner. We can openly express, you know, our faith in who we are and, and, uh, and not hide it. And so how that spills over into the program to the guys is, you know, when they come, we all, we all understand why we're here. Football, football is what brought you here, but football is not who you are. And so we ask them to operate in a professional manner. I don't say scholarship, I say salary, because this is a job. And so in doing the job, you have to understand that we do it at a high level. So whenever you're in between those white lines, it's all business. There's no other talk outside of football for that two hour period that we are out there. Okay. Once that period is over, now I have to transform into something else. First of all, I have to go to class. I have to enjoy myself as a college student. And I don't want to make it, like I said, per se, all about football. We engulf all of those different um, entities from the classroom. Like I will go and sit in some of their classes when they see me with my book bag on and you, you <laughs> see them on their cell phone. They don't, hey, Coach Burke, hey, make sure you, you guys are up going. Because what I'm doing is, is when you're talking about being successful, I want to get to know these guys all the way to the root because I'm responsible for them. I don't believe in just giving recruiting pitches to parents is, you know, because I don't want nobody doing it to, to my kids is that if I say I'm going to take care of your son or your daughter, I'm going to take care of them just like they're mine. And so in the end, when I have to stand and answer to God that, hey, how did you treat a um, Antonio Anderson or Evans Valcourt or Evan Safeman, I want to be able to say that I gave them all that I had. And so with that, I want to make sure that when I enter into that classroom, I'm not watching them because they understand if they don't get the grades, they can't play football. But it's deeper than that for me is to understand what atmosphere are these kids in to make them either successful or unsuccessful. And so I want to see how they are operating in those areas. Um, now, I can't watch everybody, but I make sure I try to get at least one visit in per semester for for a lot of the guys because a lot of them service in the same classroom. Yeah. So, um, so I go in there, and if they're taking the test, uh, I take the test. Now I tell them, I say, now the difference in me and you is I can cheat and you can't. So I'm not going to get in trouble for it. Um, but is it, it uncovers a certain layer in them that draw them closer to me that I've seen. Now, Roy Kidd, I love him to death, but you will never see Roy Kidd inside of a classroom. That's not, for me, it's different because I was average in the classroom in college because I chose to be average. And I understood how that affected me once I now got into the real world. And so now I'm in charge of the ship. Guess what? I get to control the ship. So I want to make sure that these guys are invested in what they're doing into the classroom because everybody's not going to play on Sundays. So we have to capture another side of it. Okay. That's one piece. The other piece is the community. We're big in the community. We do a lot here in this program where we are 
helping other organizations out. We are extending ourselves through service and leadership um, in our program because if you look at once you leave Warner University, who knows you? Okay, if you haven't been outside of the campus and nobody knows you, so are they more apt to hire you if they don't know you? Mm -hmm. So we want to extend ourselves and our program out to, 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 to be more inviting to say, okay, this is who we are. These are the guys we have. Not you are looking from a distance and wondering who we are. Because we look a certain way or we act. No, you're getting to know who we are, okay, inside and outside. And it changed the perspective for these guys. And a lot of them don't see that part. That's probably one of the most challenging things um, that I'm trying to get them to, to understand it. They don't understand what it does for them down the road. I told them, you're building your Rolodex. A lot of them don't even know what a Rolodex <laughs> is. And coach, what is that? Okay, you're building your contact list on your phone. If I ask you to call the most important person in your phone, who is it? You know, and they kind of they like, uh, okay, you want to have a couple of those people in, so business owners. Um, all of, you want to get to the corporation, you want to get to know these people. And so I want to put you in those atmospheres where you are now being comfortable being around those type of people. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's an extension of the football plan because when we say you're coming here for football, yeah, you're coming here for football, but you're coming here to get a degree as well so that you can go out and work. Football is the tool to get you here. That's the tool to get you here. So now once you're here, what are we doing with you? And so that's the logistics of pretty much everything that we're doing. And then the faith-based part of it, like I say, is, is you know, guys are getting saved. We had three players um, this past semester get baptized. And so they're understanding now how can God lead them, their lives, so that now they can go accomplish what they need to accomplish, you know, as a man, as a father, as a husband um, down the road. So um, we have two, two chaplains on our staff. Um, one of them, um, Dwayne Goldman, is our character coach. The other one is um, Daniel uh, Williams, who is a former college quarterback um, at Austin P, um, who serves as, like I said, our team chaplain. So those guys have a multitude of people who they can go to to service their spiritual side as well. Any questions that they may have, because here is they're trying to figure it out. They're, they're in this room, they're, they're trying to figure it out. And so from a spiritual side, I want to place in them different caliber guys that understands what this journey is and what this walk, you know, displays. We do mental health training, um, you know, off the field uh, as well. Every coach, every, 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 every player goes through this mental health training um, because I tell them, I say, you know, some days I know y'all want to kill me and some days I want to kill y'all. So <laughs> we can even this thing out by making sure we understand how to release certain pressures, how to handle certain situations. And so it's been very good for our team and, and, and uh, our program doing these things. Well, Coach, then the season is not that far away. It really isn't. And and we are uh, headed for it pretty quickly. Your season gets underway September 2nd, and that is against Brevard Community College. And, of course, you have another uh, non-conference game, Kentucky Christian, coming up. First Sun Conference game, September 30th. That's at Southeastern. You don't play a home game, by the way, till the month of October rolls around. And how about the defending national runners-up? Well, you get to take on Kaiser at home on October 14th. Can you take us through the first part of your schedule? Yeah, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a challenging um, schedule. But um, this year, we don't have any um, Division ones. We do have them in the upcoming years um, that we, we, we schedule. Them. And so we, we wanted to allow our guys to, to get in. Uh, get more season as well before we started to take on, you know, a lot of those 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 challenges uh, moving forward. And so we, we have Brevard where we'll travel there. Um, we have Kentucky Christian where we'll also go there, but we have a two-week gap in between those two games. And so we ended up losing a game um, from from one of the teams that, that, that we had scheduled that would have gave us 10 and gave us four home games so we ended up losing one but but it's okay so you know god does things for a reason so we'll, we'll have that gap and then once we start uh, september 30th versus um southeastern um, at their place then now we'll have a um, 
eight game stretch uh, where where we'll you know we'll, we'll play it all the way out and so um, we'll end with Weber um, our crosstown um, rival coach Pooch and those guys over there um, and so it's 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 a low it's a low but we'll be more equipped to handle this journey than we did last year I understand. Coach, I'm excited about the season for you and really excited to get to learn more about the program. I appreciate the time that you've given us today here as, as we're previewing the, the Warner Royals for 2023. Coach Diallo Burks in his second season with the program. Coach, thank you again for taking time with us today here on the Summit, and we appreciate that. We will be following you all throughout this year. Yes, sir, Joe. I appreciate you guys and, uh, you know, what you're doing on your on your platform to – to even help us, you know, to, to put us out there because um, a lot of people don't know Warner football because it's a fairly new program. It started in 2014, um, and so it, we haven't played a lot of football here. So I really appreciate what you're doing and, and using your platform to help catapult us as a program. I thank you. Thank you, thank you Coach.